Hello, this is Edith Neumeyer, and I'm the author of the book, The Mystery of Adam. I am going to talk about, again, the temple. Because my last video, I had a really a lot of people um, watching my video. And it was about the fact that the third temple is being built right now by Messiah. And I had a lot of views. And I know people are interested in this topic. And I had some questions, lots of questions. So I believe I need to address this topic again. Um, people are just so confused about these false doctrines, end time doctrines. And I have addressed these in my video. And... I need to continue to address these false doctrines. And of course, these false doctrines have been created by the Antichrist. Now, when I say that, um, people are again jumping to the conclusion that the Antichrist is going to come at the end. And I've seen it again by viewers of my last video, constantly thinking about this false end times doctrine that, and, and here's the bottom line of this false end times doctrine, which is absolutely false. Number one, the temple has to be rebuilt. Nothing is in the Bible that tells you the, the, the temple has to be rebuilt. Right now, Jesus, the Messiah, is building the temple out of living stones and I have to just repeat this over and over again. Jesus Christ, or Messiah, uh, is building the temple right now out of living stones. That was God's intention from the beginning. Remember God told the Israelites to build a tabernacle. That was significant for the um, that the tabernacle was really uh, temporary, and that God's plan was for His um, Son or Him He Himself becoming human being and dying on the cross for our sins, becoming that Lamb, that perfect Lamb Himself, and then building the temple according to the order of Melchizedek. See, the priesthood is, the, the Levitical priesthood is only an interim priesthood. It was not a temporary priesthood. He didn't establish this priesthood with Abraham. Well, actually there, he established a priesthood before Abraham. And that was the Melchizedek uh, priesthood. And that continued but because of the, uh, the rebellion of the Israelites, he established an interim priesthood so the, Israel, um, the Israelites would have uh, some direction to go by because they were just constantly straying from God, having idols. And so he gave them the law of Moses so they have a direction until Messiah would come. But when Messiah came, um, this Levitical priesthood was null and void. And so God had the second temple to destroy it. People so many times are believing that this, there's still going to be a third temple. And they are using false verses, Bible verses, to show that. And today I'm going to show one of them. Okay, that is not right. The temple, the physical temples have been destroyed. Okay, and there is no more need for physical temple. God did not really want the first temple which Solomon built. He told Daniel that a descendant of his will build the temple. Very obvious. And that was in 2 Samuel I don't remember. <laughs> look it up in Second Samuel. If you look at, if you look up, a descendant of yours will build the temple, 
and then it will come out. And it's in Second Samuel. And he told Daniel that a descendant of him will build temple. And Daniel just assumed it was uh, Solomon. But Solomon's kingdom did not last. He sinned. He committed idolatry again. And so his kingdom didn't last. See, Messiah came out of the lineage of Nathan. If you look up, I think Luke, Luke's lineage traces Jesus' lineage through Nathan, not Solomon. So it was not Solomon who was supposed to build the temple. The tabernacle was there and God thought the tabernacle was fine, just fine. Then when they came back from the Babylonian captivity, Zechariah wanted to rebuild the temple. And God again told Zechariah in Zechariah 6.13, so I remember that one, that the branch will build the temple. But Zechariah again continued. And then, of course, this temple was also um, uh, uh, kind of renewed by Herod the Great. But again, God had no intention to build a temple. He has no intention to have a building built with uh, cold stones. He wants a living temple, and his intention always was for a living building. Again, I talked about Ephesians 2, 11 through 22, that that is what Paul, John, Peter, all the disciples, that's what they knew what the temple is going to look like. And every time John saw the temple in heaven, it was the temple that Jesus is building right now with living stones. Okay, living stones. So now, why are people still going to Daniel and saying, oh, uh, according to Daniel, there has to be this abomination of desolation. Ah, uh, my goodness. It just drives me up a wall. It literally drives me up a wall. Why people do not read um, these verses for themselves? Well, it is hard, I have to admit. It is very hard to um, place these verses correctly. So we are looking at Daniel 6 is where the first verse is with the abomination of desolation. And that's within the 70 weeks. See, people also say, oh, the 70 weeks are not fulfilled. That is a lie. That's a lie of the false teachers. It's a lie of the Antichrist spirit. The abomination of desolation, and they also, of course, always have to quote Matthew. Yeah, because Jesus quoted from Daniel. And if you go to Daniel, then you know when this abomination of desolation happened. And that abomination of desolation did not happen, has not happened during um, the... Um, the, what they call Great Tribulation, which is not even a time period. Okay, Great Tribulation happens right now. Right now. The church age is Great Tribulation. After the church age, church age is finished, we're going to have the wrath of God. There is no more Great Tribulation for the saints during that time. There's going to be wrath. That means God is going to destroy his enemies. Now, if you think I'm stupid, study it yourself. You're the stupid one if you think I'm stupid about this stuff. Because you have not studied it. You have to listen. You will listen to false teachers. And that's all you did. Okay? If you think what I'm saying is not right, you have not done your own studies. And you need to get to the Bible and read it. And I'm going to show you um, a section today where this is very obvious. Of course, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, don't expect to understand it. Because your eyes are not going to be open. God closed people's eyes on purpose. He closed the, the eyes of the Jews on purpose because they rejected him. So, no, it is not God's fault. It is the Jews' fault. For rejecting him. And I'm not talking about the Jews. That are accepting Messiah. 
those Jews that are not accepting Messiah, they know. Okay? They know. And if that's what they choose to do, that's what they choose to do. So, today I'm going to talk about Daniel. And this is for Jews and Gentiles alike. This is the Old Testament and this is Daniel. And if anybody tells me that this abomination of desolation um, happened or is going to happen sometime in the future, that person is wrong. If you think it happens during the tribulation, you're wrong. Because when you look at Daniel 11, you have a timeline. Okay, you have a timeline when this abomination of desolation happens. And this abomination of desolation happens before the lawless one comes on the scene. Okay, this is chronological. This story starting in um, 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 11, the whole chapter of 11 in Daniel is chronological. It's an event one after another. Then we get to verse 31. And that's where the abomination of desolation happens. Let's start with 30. Verse 30. For ships of Kittim will come against him, therefore he will be disheartened and will return and become enraged at the Holy Covenant and take action so he will come back and show regard for those who forsake the Holy Covenant. Okay? So he is talking about the Holy Covenant, which has to do with um, the Jews. So, this is most likely, well, no, not most likely. This is the Roman, um, the Roman general who destroyed um, Jerusalem and the temple. That was Titus. Okay, it was Titus. And Titus came and was upset with the Jews because they constantly warred against Rome okay for a long time so he besieged the city and these people were in war for a long time and the time was so horrible if you want to learn about it read Josephus Josephus the historian will tell you how horrible it was People had no food. They were starving. They were eating their own children because they were starving. Because the Romans closed everything and they couldn't get any more food. So the people in Jerusalem were starving. So when they finally got in, they destroyed everything and everybody. And the temple was utterly destroyed. There was not one stone on top of the other. Okay? Then we're going to verse 31. And forces from him will arise, desecrate the sanctuary fortress, and do away with the regular sacrifice. And they will set up the abomination of desolation. Look here. Abomination of desolation. Desolation is the key. They desolated everything. They destroyed everything. Not one stone was on top of the other. So now we're going to get to the point where it says, Hey, this is not at the end. Okay? This is not at the end. Because if you continue to read, you will see lots of stuff will follow. Okay? Lots of stuff will follow after this abomination of desolation. This is not something that happens at the end. The next thing is, And by smooth words, he will turn to godlessness, those who act wickedly toward the covenant. But the people who know their God will display strength and take action. See, these people that were godly are the believers, the disciples, the apostles. They left Jerusalem. Okay? They didn't turn around. They left Jerusalem when all this happened and they were not destroyed. What happened to the ones that remained? And those who have insight among the people will give understanding to many. Yet they will, but they will fall by the sword and by flame, by captivity, by plunder.
for many days. You see, this is what happened. Plundering, destroying, killing, the blood was flowing down the gutters. I saw the gutters. I was there. Okay, I was there in Jerusalem. I made it, I did a tour of um, the section of uh, David's city. And they, they told us, they showed us the gutters. Okay, people uh, were hiding even in the gutters and they would put their swords down and kill the people. In, 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 in the in the blood flow down flew, uh, did flow down the gutters okay that's how horrible it was people have no idea about historical things now when they fall they will be granted a little help and many will join with them in hypocrisy what does that mean well when they fall, they will be granted a little help. Did they get a little help? Yes, some got out. But the ones that got out and they were not really believers, they will join many in hypocrisy. Okay, I believe that is a sign right there um, of Judaism kind of becoming, um, having strength again. Okay. So then we're going to go, and some of those who have insight will fall in order to refine, purge, and make them pure until the end times, end time, because it is, it is still to come at the appointed time. So read this. This is verse 35, and it says, and some of those who have insight will fall, in order to refine, purge, and make them pure until the end time, because it is still to come. It is still to come at the appointed time. Now, this is 2,000 years later, people. Okay? This is not the end times, because right now we're talking about the lawless one. And that's in verse 36. Now it goes into the lawless one. The lawless one who sits um, who sits himself in the temple, but not a physical temple, but a temple, and that's what Paul said, but the temple of God. And remember that temple of God is what? It's the church. Okay? It is the church. So somebody said, well, how can he sit in the temple? Well, it's very easy how he can sit in the temple. The church is the temple. So any uh, false teachers that come into the church and try to mislead people, those are the false um, teachers. Those are the, the, the wolves in sheep's clothing. And they can come in the church and deceive the church. And that's what this lawless one is doing. So let's read. 36. Then the king will do as he pleases. What king is this? See, it looks like it's one king. It's just one king. It's not just one king. It is a system. Okay? It is a system that is coming out. It's the Antichrist spirit that John is talking about. That was already at work during Paul's time and John's time. And eventually, that Antichrist spirit culminated and became uh, um, really functioning during, um, what's this guy's name? Constantine, Constantine's time. The emperor, the Roman emperor Constantine, who combined all the churches, all the churches, and put himself on top of it. Declared himself the top of the church. Now, you know what that is? That is uh, um, definitely an abomination. Believe me. And that is, um, what do you call it? Trying to find the word. Oh, well, I'll come up with it later. But that's what he did. He declared himself Jesus or the representative of Jesus and really, he declared himself a god. Okay, that's what the Roman emperor did, Constantine. Now, after um, the Roman uh, Empire fell, then the popes, that means 
the Bishop of Rome took over that role. So it's not just one king, it is a whole kingdom in a sense that got started with Constantine and continued with the popes. So let's read that. Then the king will do as he pleases and he will exalt and uh, magnify himself above every god. And that's what Constantine did. He, he was above all gods. He was calling himself sun god. If you look at um, historical stuff about Constantine, he declared himself sun god. He never became really um, a believer. Uh, to his deathbed, he worshipped the sun god, and he believed he is the son of the sun god. Okay, um, He ba got baptized when he, before he died, but he really never became a, really a Christian. And again, the popes continued into that footstep. They continue to call themselves Pope or Papa, Father, okay? And will speak monstrous things against the God of gods. And he will prosper until the indignation is fulfilled or finished. For that which is degreed will be done. And he will show no regard for the gods of his fathers or for the desire of women. Okay. What church, what person do you know who does not show any regard for women? It is papacy. Okay? Papacy. They made up this whole thing that the priests and the Pope and, and all the clergy cannot get married. So they are the ones who, does, do, who do not regard uh, women. Okay? That's what it says right here. For the desire of women, nor will he show regard for any other God. For he will magnify himself above them all. Okay? He is the top. He is the top. The Pope is the top. So this section with this guy of lawlessness, and you can read more about him. The beast out of the sea is the same description. And um, what Paul wrote about the lawless one fits right in here. This is what this is, though. This is the guy, the lawless guy. Okay. Um, which happens when? After the destruction of the sanctuary. After the destruction, the abomination of desolation. See, people confuse that because they don't read their Bible. When you only look at Daniel 6, you don't see that very clearly because it, it shows too much in a space, a short space of time. That means Daniel's 70 weeks are already fulfilled, people. Okay? Daniel's 70 weeks are fulfilled. When you believe lies, and these lies were created by the Jesuits, Jesuits, who had the job to counter the Reformation because the Reformers knew that the Pope was the Antichrist. And they had to counter that Reformation. And they're still doing it today, very heavily, very heavily. So read Daniel again, Daniel 11.30, and all the way to the end. So here it tells you. And then what else uh, happens next? Um, uh, 38. But instead he will honor a God of fortresses, a God whom his fathers did not know. He will honor him with gold, silver, costly stones, and treasures. Okay. So a God of fortresses. Is he talking about building all a God and um, the God, you know, building these elaborate structures that the Roman Catholic Church did um, with all the costly stones was that is that really the God also of the Roman Catholic Church which you know that uh, Paul and Jesus never told us to build these elaborate buildings like these cathedrals okay we're not we were not told to do these things. And he will take action against the strongest of fortresses with, and this is an interesting one. This is also, you can see it's papacy. 
and he will take action against the strongest of fortresses with the help of a foreign god. He will give great honor. Here it is. He will give great honor to those who acknowledge him, and he will cause them to rule over the many and will parcel, parcel out land for a price. That is what papacy has done. Papacy was in the business of giving power to rulers. Okay? Powers to rulers. And to parcel out the land for a price. In, in order when they pay, you know, to build these elaborate buildings and cathedrals, that's when they got their land. That's when they said, okay, you can be a king or emperor or whatever if you support if you support papacy. This is exactly what happened throughout um, almost these 2,000 years of um, Christian history. Okay? So, this is still not the end, people. This is all that has to happen. And it already did happen all the way to 39. But where's, where's the abomination of desolation? It is, guess what? Not at the end of the lawless one, or in the middle somewhere. No, it is way in the beginning. Okay? Way before. Way before. Let's say 5,000 years before. Well, actually maybe 3,000 because um, Constantine took over 3,016, I believe. So let's say 300 years. Within 300 years of the uh, abomination of desolation, the lawless one um, got into um, received power. Okay, so he received power. So now we are at the end of 39, um, and then 40 goes into a different event again. He's talking about at the end time. Here it says it again at the end time. We are in the end time right now. Okay, we are in the end time. So now we are in the end time. What? Uh, verse 39 from verse, verse uh, 31. So eight verses later, that means 2,000 years later, we're at the end time. Verse 30, 40. And at the end time, the king of the south will collide with him, and the king of the north will storm against him with chariots, with horsemen, and with many ships. And he will enter countries, overthrow them, and pass through. He will also enter the beautiful land, and many countries will fall. But these will be, be res rescued out of his band, Edom, Moab, and for most the sons of Ammon. Then he will stretch out his hand against other countries, and the land of Egypt will not escape. But he will again control but he will gain control over the hidden treasures of gold, silver, and over all the precious things in Egypt. And Libyans and Ethiopians will follow at his heels. Okay, who is he talking about here? What is this end time king? Again, think not just as an individual person, but maybe as mm, a federation or, yeah, a federation. What federation was co is coming now against the Pope? Okay, there's going to be somebody who's coming against the Pope. And yeah, here I'm a little um, not 100% sure if he, this is already talking about when uh, Napoleon came against the Pope and actually um, really put away with the Pope for a while and then later the Pope was established again but when you do the histor historical research Napoleon came in his generals came in and took out the Pope and the Pope was he taken to into captivity I'm not a hundred percent sure but he took out the Pope and later on the Pope was uh, re-established re again um, again, is it talking about not necessarily just one king, but a whole federation? Like, for instance, Europe.
coming against the Pope uh, and then going down um, even into the um, Holy Land. Talking about maybe England who came and really took over um, this whole area down the Ottoman Empire. And England specifically I, uh, took over Egypt. And um, it says here, but he will gain control over the hidden treasures uh, of gold and silver. That could have been Napoleon as well as England coming in and really taking over Egypt and also continuing even with the United States. It says uh, Egypt, Libya, Ethiopia, um, will follow his, his heels. In other words, they're taking over. But rumors from the east and from the north will disturb him, and he will go forth with great wrath to destroy and uh, an annihilate many. Okay, is that what we're going through today? Annihilation of many. Annihilation of what we're seeing right now in the Middle East with Iran, uh, Iraq, with Syria, with Libya, with Yemen, um, you know, with this intention of even bringing down Iran. Um, then it continues 45. And he will pitch the tents of his royal pavilion between the seas and the beautiful holy mountain. Yet he will come to his end and no one will help him. Okay. Is that what we're talking about today? This may have not happened yet. Okay. This verse may have not happened yet. But then we go into 12. Now, at that time, Michael, the great prince, who stands guard over the sons of our people, will rise. Why? Because now we're talking about wrath. We're talking about the wrath of God starting. And who is in charge of the wrath of God? It is Michael. Okay? And there will be a time of distress such has never occurred since there was a nation until that time. Yes, we have heard that before. Okay, in Matthew, there will be a distress, but he is talking about a time of distress. Some people translate it as there will be tribulation. It's the same as distress. There will be distress, but there's also, there was also distress when? Uh, in 1131, a long, 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 long time ago. Do you see that? A long time ago, there was already distress when the the the, uh, the temple was destroyed and Jerusalem was destroyed. There was already distress there. You know how much distress was during this lawless one when all the true believers were killed during the Inquisition? Um, that distress was, was very great. You know how much distress was during the time right now when people are being deceived? You think that's, that's not as bad as being killed? That is great distress when people are deceived left and right right now. Right now, they're being deceived. Okay? So, anyways, um, then in 12, we're going into the wrath of God, people. Because it says, and there will be time of distress such as never occurred since there was a nation until that time. And at that time, your people, everyone who is found written in the book, will be rescued. Okay? And then he is going into this, uh, the people that are asleep will um, awake. So this is now talking about the wrath of God right here. You know, wrath of God, it's not the great tribulation. It's the wrath of God. And if you still don't know what the difference is, read Revelation. And most of all, people, if you do not have the Holy Spirit, how in the world are you going to understand these verses correctly? Pray for the Holy Spirit. Pray that he will open up your eyes. Don't be misled. And don't say, hey, I'm a false teacher because I'm not. Or don't say, I don't know what I'm talking about because I do. I just read it to you the way it is. Yes, you have to think. Yes, you have to have the Holy Spirit. But if you don't have that, you might as well hang it up anyways. You might as well just close the book and do whatever you want to, whatever you want to do and whatever you please. I will finish up for today. 
I am over my 30 minutes. I am I want to just thank all my subscribers. Please share this video with other people. Okay? Share the video with other people because I know we are deceived today. And that's far worse than anybody killing you with the guillotines. I'll tell you that. You are lucky if you're just killed with the guillotines and still keep your faith. I will talk to you some more in another video.